In a few days, a new president will take office, and Donald Trump will be a regular citizen. Yet and still, he faces an impeachment trial in the Senate. But questions remain as to whether a regular citizen can face impeachment. Learned legal minds differ on the issue. We've had two or three precedents in the past in which the House has begun to impeach somebody, um, and then the, that person resigns, the House continues forward, so to speak, and does impeach the person, and the Senate still conducts an impeachment trial. You can't impeach unless you're going to give the president a trial. And you can't have an impeachment process once the president left office. It's only designed to remove a president. If the president does stand trial, what will that trial look like? What are the rules of order? And how does it compare to any other criminal trial you might see right here on Court TV? Well, here's a bit of a primer on what to expect. Once an impeachment resolution passes the House, as it did yesterday, charging the president with inciting the siege on Capitol Hill on January 6th, the House then appoints managers who act as prosecutors. In this case, there will be nine managers headed by Congressman Jamie Raskin, who will take the lead in presenting the case against the president. Raskin is a Democratic representative from Maryland and a former constitutional law professor. Here are some of what Raskin had to say during the impeachment hearings in the House. A bloodthirsty mob attacked the Capitol and invaded this Congress last Wednesday. They erected a gallows and repeatedly chanted, hang Mike Pence. They stormed Speaker Pelosi's office yelling, where's Nancy? They brandished the Confederate battle flag and occupied the Senate chamber. They wounded dozens of people, hospitalizing dozens of people, killed five of our people. For six hours, they shut down the counting of electoral college votes, our sacred process under the Constitution for peaceful transfer of power in the United States. They may have been hunting for Pence and Pelosi to stage their coup, but every one of us in this room right now could have died. The president will be the defendant, and he will be represented by attorneys. In his previous impeachment trial, he was represented by a legal team led by Ken Starr and Alan Dershowitz. We don't yet know who will represent him this time around. The rules allow for opening statements for both sides, and the prosecution gets to go first. Since it is the president himself on trial, the chief justice of the Supreme Court presides. In this case, Chief Justice John Roberts. The chief justice does have the option of not accepting the job. The Constitution says that the chief justice shall preside over the trial of a president. But what about an ex-president? We don't know. Um, I think it's fair to say that the Senate will want Chief Justice Roberts to preside because having Vice President Harris preside will look really bad. Uh, just it will seem unfair, basically. Uh, now, whether the Chief Justice feels that he can preside or over a trial of an ex-president is uncertain. He sort of has to make that call, or at least he's got to have a strong sense that the Senate wants him to do it for him to, to actually show up. So we will see. I think he will come and I think he will preside, but it's, it, it, he could be challenged as the presiding officer by the president's defense attorneys if they wanted to do that, and they'd have an argument for that. To start the proceedings, the articles are introduced to the Senate. That should happen on January 19th. A vote is held, and if adopted by a majority, a summons is sent to the president calling him to appear. If the president decides not to show up, the trial will proceed as if he had shown up and pled not guilty. Preparation begins, and when both sides are ready, the trial begins with an oath. Will all senators now stand or remain standing uh, and raise their right hand? Do you solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Donald John Trump, President of the United States, now pending, you will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws? So help you God. We'll present the Senate trial rules are like a normal criminal trial, but differ in one important sense. Those rules can be altered by a majority of the Senate at any time. So what are the rules of evidence? Basically, there are none. I mean, that is, the Senate can hear whatever evidence it wants or choose not to hear it. Now, last year, of course, there were no witnesses in the trial. This time, there will be witnesses, almost certainly. 
and it will therefore look more like a regular criminal trial. Uh, but all the decisions about evidence are made by the Senate. Now, the Chief Justice could be asked to rule on different points of evidence, and when someone's being examined or cross-examined, there could be objections to the questioning, just like there would be in a regular criminal case, and he may be asked to rule on that. Um, but there are no rules about what is admissible. Now, will people kind of follow the, the typical rules of evidence in a criminal case? Probably, but if they want to make exceptions, they can. And the standard of proof? Well, there is no strict standard. It is up to each and every senator to vote with their conscience. Just like in a normal trial, House-appointed managers can call witnesses and present evidence. They are entrusted with full subpoena power. In this case, expect to see a video of the president's speech on January 6th that is alleged to have incited the attack on Capitol Hill. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. But we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. Also, expect to hear from experts and others about the events leading up to the insurrection, like the president's baseless attacks on the election. The defense is expected to claim the president's words were protected by the First Amendment and could call experts to establish his innocence. Any evidentiary issues, such as relevance, admissibility, redundancy, will be decided by the chief justice. Now, here's another departure from what we're used to seeing in regular trials. Any senator may object to rulings by the chief justice at any point. And at that point, the issue will be put to the entire Senate for a vote. Ties will be broken by the chief justice. The chief justice does have the option of not ruling at all on any objections and going directly to the Senate vote to decide any issue that comes before him. Now, Article 6 of the Rules and Procedure in Practice in the Senate and sitting on impeachment trials spells out the enforcement power of the Senate. Article 6 gives the Senate the power to compel the attendance of witnesses and to enforce obedience to its orders, mandates, writs, precepts, and judgments. And the Senate may employ such aid and assistance as may be necessary to enforce and carry into effect the lawful orders of the Senate. Now, normally, a sitting president cannot be compelled to testify, but the president would be an ordinary citizen at the time of trial. And there is no clear precedent. What this means is if the former president is called and chooses not to testify, it could present a very interesting issue for the Senate, particularly if Kamala Harris ends up presiding over the trial. It will be up to Kamala Harris to decide whether to issue a subpoena to President Trump. Uh, if she does, this will look like a tremendously partisan act. Of course, it is possible the former president could take the stand and invoke the Fifth Amendment like any other criminal defendant. Now, once the evidence is in, Closing arguments are delivered with the prosecution going last. The impeachment document is then voted on in its entirety. A two-thirds majority of the Senate, rather than a unanimous jury, is required to convict. Motions to reconsider or, in effect, appeals are not allowed. The only difference is that in an impeachment trial, the, juror, the jury and the judges are the same. That is, the, the, the Senate is the jury, and they're also the judges of things like what they're going to hear. So uh, they never leave the room when uh, the attorneys uh, make their presentation to the chief justice. Um, and uh, yeah, then at the conclusion, they'll, they'll go to a final vote. So to sum up, comparing a regular criminal trial to an impeachment trial, the similarities are there are prosecutors and defendants, witnesses, objections, the Fifth Amendment is available, and there is a presumption of innocence. The differences are there is a jury of 100 senators. The jury decides the rules of evidence. There is no strict standard of proof, no appeals, and embedded in the entire process is the specter of politics. History will be made once again beginning January 19, 2021, the second impeachment trial of President Donald J. Trump. Vinny? Thanks so much, Michael. All right, so, you know, when you see this trial, it's going to make you really appreciate our system of justice that we cover every other day here on Court TV, where you get an impartial jury, right? This is, this is the opposite of an impartial jury. 
I mean, by, by definition, they're all partial. They're all politicians from particular parties that have spoken um, so much about the defendant and the, uh, or the, I guess, the president, the defendant, whatever. Um, it, it's so different. Like, none of these senators would ever get on a, a trial if this was under the rules that you normally see, which is the incredible difference between uh, what you're going to see during that trial and what you see all the time here on Court TV. The other big difference is, and this is really important because this is the backbone of our system of justice, yeah, you have the presumption of innocence, but in criminal courts, there's a burden of proof that are on prosecutors. Like, you've got to prove the elements of the crime, and there are actual elements that are laid out that you have to prove. None of that exists here. You know, there, there is no burden of proof. It's just the senators who are the jurors uh, and the judge all at the same time and the prosecutors as well. I mean, the people who are prosecuting are part of the Senate as well. So it, it, it's, it's amazing, or part of the House of Congress and part of the party that the senators belong to. So, and they make up the rules as they go along. I mean, if you did this in criminal trials, it would be insanity. It might be very entertaining, but it would be complete insanity. So um, this trial will make you appreciate criminal trials and understand uh, how different they are and why they are different.